Okay, Bunker Labs and Launch Lab Online, welcome to another all in town hall. I feel like we are spoiled today because we are getting two town halls. One was our equip right before this um, with Congressman Green, who spoke about the CARES Act and PPP. If you missed that, it is in the video section of our group. And now I am here to welcome our Inspire Town Hall, which is going to be led by none other than the Bunker Lab CXO, Hark Harold. Welcome, Hark. Hey, thanks, Liz. Really appreciate it. Welcome all. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, as Liz mentioned, I'm our Chief Experience Officer for Bunker Labs uh, and Director of Chapter Operations. Uh, retired Air Force after uh, 28 years, a couple of years ago, and now with Bunker Labs, uh, overseeing our 35 chapters in 25 states, as well as all of our programs, from the ones uh, Liz runs with our Launch Lab Online through veterans and residents, and our CEO circle, as well as our Bunker Brews and Bunker Connect program. So really glad that you're all here. I am excited to have a, a, a good friend of mine, Ryan Harris, who played for the Denver Broncos as our guest today. Uh, Ryan is uh, from Minnesota, four-year starter at the University of Notre Dame as an offensive lineman. Uh, was drafted by the Broncos and uh, then was uh, released by the Broncos. And so we're going to talk a little bit about perseverance and resiliency. That's, uh, you know, uh, one of the areas that, that I really was excited to have Ryan come and talk about. He ended up playing for four NFL teams, returned to Denver, uh, was part of the Super Bowl 50 championship team, uh, retired in 2016 from the NFL, and is now an author, speaker, and sports radio host. Ryan, turn it over to you for some introduction. Yeah, thanks, Hark, and, and thank you, Liz, and, and thank you to the Bunker Labs community. I've, I've been fortunate enough to do a couple of things with you, and, uh, you know, I just want to start by giving me my utmost gratitude for all of you who have served and your loved ones as well. Um, you know, we play by words like honor and respect, and you live by them, so I'm very honored to be in your presence, and I will never forget the sacrifice that um, many of you have made uh, and those who you love have made, so thank you for everything. Uh, and uh, here we go. That's awesome. Hey, thanks, Ryan. All right, let's get into it. Uh, so, uh, you know, you, you <clears throat> persevered through numerous years in the NFL, uh, you know, good times, bad times, surgeries. Um, okay, can you find the, in your book, uh, The Mindset for, uh, mas mas Mindset for Mastery, uh, you talk about um, I am, I can, I will as kind of a mantra. Can you uh, talk about what that is, means to you and how that can apply to people who are living in this time with the COVID-19 and the impacts there? Yeah, well, I mean, specifically in football and, and really in life, we choose our mindset every day, you know, and whether that's going to be an obstacle we're going to let get in our way, or we're going to believe in ourselves. And I really had to choose a mindset early on because people will lie to you about yourself, right? You know, hey, Ryan, you're not big enough. You're too young. You're not quick enough. Well, it turns out I was, you know, and look no further than, you know, Tom Brady just did an excellent interview with uh, on Sirius XM. And he talked about how he wasn't even the top guy at Michigan, uh, wasn't the top guy when he first got to the Patriots, but he always believed he'd be a starting quarterback. And look, he's now one of the best quarterbacks of all time. So I chose at an early age, early in my career, uh, to, to create my mindset. And I did it with the words, I am, I can, I will. And I am gives you a moment to just check in with yourself and be honest with yourself. You know, I am concerned about contracting Corona. Uh, what else are you though? Go beyond that. I'm also prepared. I am also safe. I am checking on my neighbors. Well, okay. Now it's all of a sudden you're past just the fear of, of, of getting Corona or your loved one getting Corona. And if you don't give yourself that moment to stop and be honest with yourself, you can really just get stuck. So, hey, what else are you is something that I would always say to myself. Even the night before the Super Bowl, I am terrified that my greatest achievement will be my greatest failure if we lose this game tomorrow. Uh, I'm also excited. I'm also prepared. I am also going to knock the crap out of somebody tomorrow on the field of the Super Bowl. I mean, this is a dream come true. So you just keep yourself moving. And then I can gives you the opportunity in front of you instead of what happened behind you. So I am terrified. You know, I'm worried about getting coronavirus. Well, I am prepared. I, I am safe. And I can make sure my neighbors have groceries. I can reach out. I can donate to people who can go out there. I can support a local hospital. Now it gives you something to do. And then I will is the action call. You know, we all know, and you, got, you all better than me, 
that, you know, words and ideas are nothing without action and we have to take action. And that's your commitment to yourself. You know, I am terrified the night before the Super Bowl that my greatest achievement is going to be my greatest failure if we lose this game. I am ready. I am going to knock the crap out of somebody. I can put on my pass tomorrow. I can have fun and I will raise the trophy and I will be a champion. And I made that commitment to myself the night before. And I use that all the time, even in parenting. Uh, you know, I use it in coronavirus here. I am anxious. I am, you know, I am, un I don't know where it's coming from. I'm also safe. I am also secure. I am prepared. And so just talking yourself through and constructing your mindset around whatever it is you're going through. It helped me get through three back surgeries. It helped me get through five surgeries to save my lower leg below my knee. It helped me get over a total toe replacement. And it helped me the season that I started 15 games for the Kansas City Chiefs. And they said, Ryan, we don't think you have any football left. And I said, I am going to help a team win a championship. I can prepare and I will be picked up by a team. And surely that's when the Broncos picked me back up and we went and won a Super Bowl. So your mindset is your choice and you can create it everywhere you go. That's awesome, Ryan. Thanks. Um, you know, also in your book, you talk about the daily dig. Uh, and when, when I read that, right, I interpret that as doing the things that, that aren't exciting, that, that you may not even want to do, but that contribute to getting to where you want to get to. Uh, can Absolutely. you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to talk about it to people, right, who in, in um, you know, basic training got to make their bed every day, right? <clears throat> but, you know, one thing they did in the NFL when I was a rookie is I had to make the coffee every day. Now, I hated that for two reasons. One, I didn't know how to make coffee, right? And two, uh, I just was pissed. Like, I got other things to do. Why am I making coffee every day? And it wasn't until three, three quarters through that season I realized it's not about the coffee. You guys could get coffee and often did where they'd bring a cup of coffee into the offensive line room and be like, Harris, did you make the coffee? I'm like, yeah, like, good. I'm not going to use a cup today. You know what I mean? But they were teaching me that there are things you have to do every day to be better. And you have to learn new skills and you have to be willing, whether you're in a good mood, a bad mood, a win or a loss to come in. And, and nothing solidified how important that was to me and my career and to my teammates' careers. And when we won the Super Bowl, I mean, we have over 200 diamonds on that Super Bowl 50 ring and not we all know you have to dig for diamonds. And it was just such a moment for me that we forget sometimes that you have to pick up a shovel and dig. You've got to do hard work. You've got to do work you don't like. Hell, I, I played with some Hall of Famers like DeMarcus Ware and Vaughn Miller. And as great as those guys are on Sundays, they are absolutely brutal to practice against. But it didn't matter. I had to find a way to dig and to every day to make my great and it started my rookie year with learning how to make coffee and and I continue it every day in my life to hey there's some things I want to don't want to do everybody eventually is going to pay taxes we don't love doing that but you got to do those things and sometimes we get hung up on the things we don't want to do and and it's easy to get that way but you got to remember you have to dig for your diamonds pick up a shovel and dig and you've got to do the work yeah, and you mentioned also, you know, in the conversations we've had, right, everything that builds up to success, right? It's it's not just the, hey, you ran those sprints that one time in practice, right? Yeah. You you got the tip from DeMarcus Ware on your footwork. You get it's all the things that build up to it, right? Absolutely. I mean, what when we won the Super Bowl, one of my favorite moments that I had personally was I was just so thankful. I was emotionally thankful. And I was thankful for the fact that after we gra I graduated high school, I was at an 8 a.m. workout the next day. Now, I don't know, Hart, I'm not going to ask you to incriminate yourself, you know what I'm saying? But I'm sure some people did different things the morning after they graduated high school. I was grateful that I'd been doing yoga for 12 years at that time. And many times I was the only black person in the yoga class. And, you know, I smelled a lot of other people's farts. But you know what? I was grateful that I did yoga to give me a way to really focus on balance. I was grateful because I couldn't tell you what mattered, but I could tell you that everything mattered. And in all those moments, and you've had them in your life, Hark, and those of you who are here with us have had them where you've gone through a tough time. You've had to do things you didn't do. But you appreciate that now, whether that was you didn't have an elevator uh, at the barracks and you had to walk your groceries up or you had to jog to get chow or there's all these things that in the moment really suck and they can draw some negativity out of you if you let it. 
but also these are the things we appreciate. Like you mentioned, you know, I'd gotten released by the Broncos. The very same thing brought me back and we won a championship. So you never know how things will end up. And I guarantee you the things you really hate right now are the building blocks you need to be successful. Otherwise you wouldn't need them. You wouldn't be doing them. Yeah. Yeah, one of the quotes um, that you, you've used is uh, from Vince Lombardi, right? It's not whether you get knocked down, it's uh, it's whether you get up. And some yeah. people may look at you and go, well, hey, look at him. He's a, he's a big guy. He's a professional athlete. You know, what what did he have to overcome? I've got, uh, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, my customer base has totally changed or I need to, to make a quick pivot. How am I supposed to, you know, what what can I learn from from Ryan Harris? Uh, about this and and I know you I know you've overcome injuries and surgeries and you know uh, everything being the only black guy in the yoga class right <laughs> uh, uh, can you share some of those with the audience and maybe how they can apply those lessons yeah you know uh, I'll, I'll go through a couple you know one that I think about all the time is when I was a freshman at Notre Dame and I literally got knocked out of my cleat by a senior who had just made it his point to teach me how far I needed to go. And, uh, and I just remember, and sometimes you don't make the most amazing sound when you get the crap knocked out of you, right? In football, so like, ah, you know, and all these teammates of mine who I'm trying to earn their respect and ah, I'm a tough guy, they're all laughing. Well, that night, you know, I just went back to the room and I'm like, I am gonna kick this guy's ass in this one drill. And I will, I can practice my steps tonight and I will fire off the ball, knock him under the chin and drive him back. And he will never hit me out of my shoes again. Sure enough, the next day came and wham. I mean, if this guy had done anything different, I'd have been flat out on my face, but he did exactly what I had visualized. And I drilled him off the ball. And those same teammates of mine that were laughing the day before were now, woo, like shocked. And, you know, when I retired, I got a great from Adam Gase, who is now the head coach uh, at the New York Jets. He said, Ryan, congratulations. You never know. You will never know how many people you proved wrong. There are times when I had to learn things all the time. When I went to Kansas City Chiefs, we had to learn a new technique called the Gallup. And I called my coach, who, who also had went to Notre Dame. I said, man, I think you're, you're losing your mind, old man. I don't think this is ever going to work. And he just kept with me. Hey, Ryan, I know you're going to love it. Ryan, I know you're doubting it now, but I know you're going to love it. We'd be in the kitchen. We'd be in the cafeteria line. and be like, are you thinking about that gallop? I saw you started to gallop. It was really nice. Eventually it became a part of my tool bag, and it helped me win Super Bowl 50. So there are all these points where I had to get better. I remember when I first got to the NFL, after my first practice, I remember standing in the showers thinking, do I got to tell them I can't play football? These guys are moving too fast. These guys are so big, so strong. Not to mention, I'm hearing things that I don't, I've never heard before. Like, oh, I got a great interest rate on my home. Or, oh, we're going to ship our cars across the country. I'm like, what does all mean? So there are all these moments throughout my career, throughout your life, Hark, and those here listening, where you're going to have to pivot. And maybe it's not as much a pivot as it is absorb or grow or grow your perspective. And those moments are critical to your success. That, that also tells you you're in tune. If I got knocked out of my shoes, and I just went about my business every other day, like every other day, I would have never became a great football player. But the fact that you can realize that you need to pivot, the fact that you're understanding and watching change happen before you lets you know you are in tune and you are where you want to be in line with your goals. And then you can create what you want beyond this current confusion. What do you want to happen? What do you want your customers to know if you have to pivot? Do you want them to trust and know you? Do you want them to know you have their best interests in mind? Do you want them to know how your product can help them in a time like this? And you can start focusing on that space by choosing your mindset. And like you mentioned in that quote with, with, with Mr. Lombardi, I love it's how it says, it's not, it's, not, it's, 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 it's not whether you get knocked down. You are going to get knocked down. I got knocked down. I got the wind knocked out of me in games. When you get, when you get back up, what are you going to do? And every great football player who's ever played has been knocked down. And what makes you great and what makes everyone great is what happens after. And if you have that knowledge that you will get knocked down, if everything's been peachy until now, but you knew you were going to get knocked down eventually, well, now what was your plan? How much did you plan for that? And you will get knocked down, but what will happen when you get back up? And for me, it was always, I'm going to get back up and learn from my mistake and find a way to win. 
Yeah, hey, I want to go a little bit deeper on that because uh, you've told me the uh, that uh, I think you said you know one of the worst feelings you had was uh, laying on your back after being plowed over uh, <laughs> by a defensive player and watching uh, an all-pro quarterback get sacked because you had uh, you know not stopped the defensive player. Uh, so what was it like yeah. when you went back to that huddle? Yeah, I mean it was. Uh... <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I don't know how many times, you know, people yell, look out, but and I think we all know who've been in kind of tight quarters. Um, you know, there's this weird motion where all of a sudden I'm seeing everything upside down. I gotten ran over by a defensive end. And uh, although he was a great player, it didn't matter at the time, you know, and here's my head, my, I see the tips of my cleats uh, from the bottom of my vision and I see my quarterback and I'm like, look out, you know, and wham, he gets hit. I go right over and I picked him up. Hey man. That's all me. I got you the rest of the game. And you just be in that moment. Okay, I am upside down. All right. I am going to warn my quarterback. I can scream, look out, you know, and I can get my ass up. I can go over there and I can pick up my quarterback. I can tell him it was my fault. I will go over and pick him up, tell him it was me, and I will tell him that it's not going to happen again the rest of the game, which already can see how just choosing your mindset and kind of stringing that together, even in little moments can really make a big difference. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and I think, you know, as, as military members and, and military connected entrepreneurs, right, we try to do that too. We try to help each other up. You know, if we get knocked down, you see somebody get knocked down, uh, we just go over. So that's, that's great. Hey, let's talk a little bit about uh, eliminating distractions and using your time as an investment. Yeah. Uh, right now, a lot of people may be just focused on the news, right? This is, and, and they kind of get wrapped into that and, and just not looking at other things. Uh, but you have a business, a job, a family, right? What are you doing to balance those, um, to balance those and eliminate distractions and invest your time for, you know, what's going to come next? Yeah. Um, you know, the first thing I'm doing is giving myself a lot of grace. You know, I think the best thing we can all do in this time is realize we haven't been through something like this before. You know, perhaps on a deployment or someone has been in a far serious, more situation of, of a Ford operating base or something like that. But for the mass majority of people, we have been untouched in our life, untouched with disruption, right? And fortunately for me, traveling and, and being on different teams in the NFL, I, I've had this disruption. But I, I think it's a great point you bring up with distractions because it's not just now. It's also later, but a great way to think about distractions. And I always say, who, what, when, where, why? Who's a distraction? What's a distraction? You know, is your cell phone a distraction at a certain point? When are certain things a distraction? My cell phone's a distraction when I want to spend quality time with my wife and kids. You know, where are certain distractions? You know, I love Las Vegas. It's got great food. Um, but that's a distraction if I'm thinking about it during the season or during the broadcast season. And why are certain things distractions? Why are your video games distractions? You know, are you trying not to do something? But one of the things to look at now are what are some things you're not doing that hasn't affected you as much? And, and for me, that's been, I was, I was a little too focused on being busy and I confused that for being productive. And so I would get a 9 a.m. coffee three times, maybe four times a week before my radio show. And then I would often two to three times have a meeting afterwards. I wasn't really getting a lot done there. And we can talk about networking and it's absolutely important to put yourself in new positions, but I wasn't in line with my priorities, which is be a great husband, be a great father and be a great professional in everything that I do. I was just kind of spending time and it was affecting, you know, the home. So start looking at some things that you're not doing. I used to get a cigar every week. Now I've had one cigar in a month, you know, I'll probably have one today after talking with you, Hart, but, do I need to go have a cigar once a week with buddies? Probably not, you know, but what are some other distractions for me? I mean, my, our, my wife and I talked about, sometimes my kids are a distraction for my own personal health. You know, I had, a, we, my, my wife and I had a discussion about two weeks ago. So, you know, what can we do for each other here? What's not working for each other? This is a new environment. And my wife said, after your radio show, I need you to take some time. I need you to take a nap and not just come back into the kids. Cause that's, you're not yourself when you do that. You're not yourself for the next three hours. So, okay, I had to hear that. My kids are a distraction from me bringing my best self when I want to be with my kids. How confusing is that, right? But it could be a person. It can be a family member. And already in this corona, I've told three different 
you know, pieces of, uh, of work that I was a part of a couple of boards and another initiative, somebody want to start. And I just said, you know, honestly, I, this isn't what I want to do with my time moving forward. I will, I'm happy to support you. I'm happy to be a resource, but this isn't something that I want to do. And, and in that way, I'm telling them it's a distraction for me. You're not helping me be a better husband. You're not helping me be a better father. You're not helping me be a pro in broadcasting, speaking, and real estate. And if you can create those buckets, what, whatever your priorities are, see how something bounces in those buckets, right? Does, does coming today to this webinar, does that bounce into your buckets of priorities? Does it bounce to another one and another one? Well, okay, well, great. You should probably do it. But if that ball gets stuck in any one of those, right? Does a 9 a.m. meeting help me be a better husband? Uh, probably not. Okay, well, can it go into any of the other boxes and bins? Well, it doesn't help me be a better father and it doesn't help me be a professional in these areas. Okay, this ball doesn't bounce this way. And just giving yourself a mechanism to say, I like this, but I'm not going to spend my time with this. And I mean, and to give you a quick example of how it works in the NFL, I mean, when I was training after the Kansas City Chiefs in my eighth season told me I had no football left, I had two trainers, Lauren Landau, or three really, Lauren Landau, Wade Brinkman, and my longtime trainer, Ted Johnson. Those are the only three people that trained with me. When we went to the Super Bowl, I had over 200 ticket requests. How many of those same people were with me in literally the dark gyms of doubt and despair? I had to, those are distractions. I had somebody who I had talked to for three years tell me, Ryan, I want you to come to my kindergartner's class and read them a book and get them excited about the Super Bowl. That's a distraction. That's not my job. My job is to go win a Super Bowl. So I love your, your kids. I'm, I'm happy to go to the kindergarten class after the season. But in the middle of what I'm trying to accomplish, that's a distraction. And just being comfortable with yourself and recognizing distractions in your life will make a gigantic difference, not only in how you spend your time, but how you feel when you spend your time there. That's awesome. I, I love it. There was a lot in there. Pro, you know, recognizing the difference between productivity and busyness. Yeah. I think that's a lot of it. Um, somebody to give you that honest feedback, right? Uh, yeah. Somebody who'll say, Hey, listen, don't do this. You're, you're not who you think you are in this, right. in this case. Uh, and then the buckets. So I'm, I'm going to go. So we've got some questions from the audience I want to get to. Uh, and so the first one is, um, Ryan, you have a diversified portfolio now of businesses. Um, how can these various types of opportunities help uh, businesses and entrepreneurs through tough times? You know, how, how do you look at the multiple avenues of revenue streams? Yeah, well, 70% of millionaires have multiple income streams. 78% of NFL football players are bankrupt and chemically dependent or divorced or all three just two years after they're done playing. So I knew coming out of the NFL, I was going to face one of the greatest challenges of my life. And one of the ways in which I, I wanted to create stability was through an ecosystem. I have multiple interests and I wanted to make sure, and it's funny, you know, uh, some people and some very successful people tell me I never had a backup plan because then I would have gone to it. That's great. Now, but I also wanted to have security. I mean, so for me, my diversified portfolio falls in line with what I need. Leaving the NFL, I wanted security, I wanted income, I wanted freedom. So what can I do with these things, right? How can I make my expertise fit into these buckets? And so the big thing for me was to, yes, get things going, but also I, at different times, I got too many things going. I had about five companies when I started, and now I'm at really three. And I, being able to say, you know what, this is a good idea. It's going to take more infrastructure. It's going to take people to care about it more than I am. I'm not going to continue to go down this road. So some of it's surrender, but other also just a big picture, right? And if you're somebody who can't do multiple things, know that about yourself and focus only on one goal. And in, e in my ecosystem, each item has one goal. My real estate, the one goal is to bring income. I'm not trying to leverage things and get big here or there. I want stable income. My speaking is about impact. I make an incredible impact when I go talk about money to Google and, and to kids and to corporations or I talk about leadership or teamwork, it's a different environment. I can create great impact in my community and beyond. And then with sports, I've got, I don't know if you see it, uh, Hark, but I've got a doctorate in applied football theory and mechanics. And when I, when I broadcast for Notre Dame's football or do the broadcast, 
on Monday Night Football or even my, my sports broadcast today, you know, I love humanizing and educating people about the game they love, and I get incredible stability from it. So whether you're diversified, it's great to be diversified, but what is that part of diversification doing for you? Is it serving a purpose? And oftentimes, I think people say, well, I just want multiple revenue streams. I want multiple things. And that's how you can overextend yourself and not be sound in how you want to run your business. Uh, and that can affect you later on. Yeah, that's great. And, and what I like, too, is, and, and we've had this conversation, you and I, right, is go with your strengths, right? So each of those, though, though they're diversified, they, they, you have strengths you can use in each of those. And you don't yes. try to do what's outside of your strengths, right? You find people. Uh, you know, we've had the conversation that while you probably would not be as good at throwing uh, touchdown passes as Peyton Manning, uh, he probably also would not be a good offensive lineman, right? Yeah, and, and you, know, um, you know, I don't want to bring up too many times, but Tom Brady talked about, hey, on a team, I can't catch the football. I can't, I can't rush the passer. So I've got to appreciate what other people can do. And you've got to be able to know your strengths. I highly recommend Strength Finders. It was powerful for me to learn about what my strengths were. I mean, most people don't know what their strengths are. And, and so things that I learned are that when I take risks, I'm confident in taking risks and that I love to learn and I love to include other people. And so really do some personal work. Take this time and take a quiz, read a book. And, and one of the other things I'm doing is and, and have some fun too now part of the, the the stream in my ecosystem is fun i'm learning chinese just because because you know i know spanish i know some arabic but you know ni hao wo xiao ryan harris zhang zhuan xie xuan you know what i'm saying ni hao chao fan would you like some fried rice i'm ryan harris i'm a chinese student like let's let's expand let's do something different read a new book take a webinar you know try to get certified in something what knowledge never goes wasted what, can, what fun can you have right now? You know, what can you do with fun in your life and your ecosystem? And that to me is a better way to look at diversification versus, well, I can do this and that, and this and that. You can do a million things. What do you want to do? What's going to bring you joy? And what is the one goal in each of those things? Yeah, I love that. And, and one of the reasons I love talking with you, Ryan, is every time I get to be amazed by something different that you're doing. And that's, that's great. Um, Hey, so another question from the audience was, uh, in the military, it's all about teams. You're so motivated to get back up when you fall. How do you motivate others to do the same? Do you have any techniques for helping others to be motivated and, and getting them to do that? To get back up? To, to get back up, yeah. Yeah, I mean, one, what's the alternative? You know, I mean, I could go in third. If I'm going against Vaughn Miller on third and 11, or if I'm going against, you know, your favorite quarterback, and I'm a defensive back, I'm third and 12, and I'm thinking, oh, God, they're going to get me, they're going to get me, you know, or, or what, you know, the play runs, what's going to, what's my chance of success versus, man, I got you locked up, Hark, you, he can throw the ball, I don't care where Peyton throws that ball, Hark, you are locked down, homie, let's go, you're going to need another down, it's a totally different mindset, you know, what's the, what's, so what's the alternative here, you know, that's one thing to think about, and I've even said that to myself, Every training camp in the NFL, I wanted to quit football. That's how I knew I was going to have a great season. You know, I want to quit this shit, man. And I don't want to go to another practice. I don't want to go to another meeting. Say it. Say it out loud. Laugh at it. I'm going to quit. I'm going to go tell my wife. I'm going to drop out of the radio station. I'm going to quit doing this. And I'm going to learn how to fly fish. Go ahead. Say it out loud. You know, I, 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 too often I think we try and hold those things in. When really fear is universal, fear is absolutely going to be present in every success you have. And whether it's getting back up, well, what are you getting back up for? Were you maybe errant to begin with and what you wanted to do? Was I trying to be a quarterback, you know, <laughs> instead of just being happy to play offensive tackle? So that's one thing. Think about the alternative and give yourself the opportunity to be honest. You know, I am pissed off I'm knocked down. I also do want to bring in the fact that not everybody wants to win. And let me explain something in, in a different term. There are over 1,600 NFL players every year in the NFL. Only 53 become champions. How does that happen? Less than 1% win. 
w is willing to do what it takes to win. I had teammates who, as soon as they got free sweatpants and a t-shirt and a couple of free meals, were happy to go home. They didn't want to work. And I, I, I really feel, and especially, I can only imagine being in the military, if you're not working hard, you're not there. It's dangerous, right? Same kind of, to a far lesser extent in the NFL, it's dangerous if you're going to be around somebody who's not going to work hard. But in the real world, there are there are cavities of places who don't want to, people where where people who don't want to work hard can hide out and can even somehow ascend the, the the power structure. And you're looking at it going, what the hell is happening? Know that you're going to be in a different environment. Know that the people and teammates around you might not all want to win. I mean, on the four teams and ten seasons I had, I can only think of four seasons in those tens were ten where I had teammates who wanted to win. 60% of my NFL career was spent on teams that didn't care about winning. They cared wow. about winning a few games and then partying, partying or, or winning a few games, getting a new contract, and they're good. So that's also a piece that takes some of that pressure off yourself because not everybody wants to succeed and not everybody is worth your time. Yeah, that's, that's great. So going back to the, um, uh, to the topic we talked about earlier, another question that came in was, um, how do you keep the mentality going of, you know, how do you get over that last pass? So what do you do when, when, you know, the last one didn't work? Um, you know, what's your, uh, you know, after actions report from the military perspective or, or how do you evaluate that and then build on that to then succeed going forward? That's a great question. And I actually use uh, the after action report model uh, after speeches for myself, you know, uh, I, I, I want to answer it by telling you this. You've got to celebrate the wins you did have. We, the year we won the Super Bowl, we went out to Indianapolis and we lost at the end of the game. And when we got back on the bus, we were on, I was on bus three, which is a whole different story. You know, there's only one rule, no rookies, okay? And even though we lost a big game, there was singing and dancing and laughter because you know what? You were there to do it. At the Pittsburgh Steelers, the first thing that Mike Tomlin goes over every single morning First rule in getting better is showing up. Did you show up? Did you show up for that after action report? Yes. Okay, good. So no matter what, you already got better, right? So that's, that's something that every day at the Pittsburgh Steelers for the last 11 years, they've talked about. First rule in getting better and getting better is showing up. Well, what win did you have when that pass didn't work? And also think about when did you see an, an incompletion or an interception and the quarterback just left the field? You know, you, you, we just saw Patrick Mahomes this last Super Bowl throw two interceptions. And one of them he threw with seven and a half minutes left to go in the game. Well, thank God he didn't just throw up the towel and be like, you know what, we lost. We'll try and come back next year. No, he did an immediate after action report. He celebrated what was happening. And then he went to his teammates who he would need, specifically Tyreek Hill, and said, I need you. I need you to do this. So when that pass doesn't work, what can you do? What did you do well? What can you tell somebody they did well? Hey, Hark, man, you know, this was our first internet connection. And, uh, you know, although the president of the United States and all the, all the, you know, the legislative branch didn't join us, you did a hell of a job getting us connected, my friend, and way to connect me and, and others to a new experience and something to do different with their time. I mean, now, you know, what does that failure look like after you celebrate the success of showing up, of trying? of being there. And I know, Hark, you and I both love that, that Teddy Roosevelt quote about the man in the arena, but my favorite part, you know, you know, where he says, those cold and timid souls that shall know neither victory nor defeat. If you are in that ring and you get knocked down, good. That was supposed to happen because you were stretching yourself, trying to grow. So start by celebrating wins and then look at what you can do, not what happened. Well, okay, this happened. Well, what can we do about that next time? And we would do that in the huddles of plays sometimes in a game. You know, hey, we or we'll go to the sidelines. Hey, they're going to bring that blitz. Here's what we're going to do next time. We're going to stop everything. You're going to hear me pause as a quarterback. I'm going to say, white 80, white 80. When you hear me stop, that you need to know that we're going to change the play because they're going to bring that blitz again. And when they do, we are going to gash them for a touchdown. All right? You guys ready to go? Great. Now, what does that failure, that last series look like? Does it matter? No. So just continue to move. Start by celebrating your win. Look at what you can do and communicate that to yourself 
those who you're working with and even those around you to, to so that they, they know what you're doing. You know, if, if we, if, if Hark and I are, are building a new computer program and we need to go till midnight because we realize we're deficient in an area, well, hey, we got this great, we got this program right where we want it. We got to tinker with it with it a little bit. We can work all night if we need to do it. Hey, sweetheart, I'm going to be working with Hark all night to make sure we get this product done. Please don't ask me to be in bed or tuck the kids in because I've got to do this. How much happened now from that last failure? We started with a critical failure to our product. We celebrated that we have one. We said what we're going to do and we communicated it. And that's a fantastic way to continue to win, not just in the NFL, but in life as well. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, and, and I like that, especially, you know, you got to you got to do more than think about showing up. You got to do you got to actually do something. Pick up Don't just think about dig. what you might do. Th think what could be. You got to actually go out there and try something. Go do it. Um, Absolutely. So, so I think we have time for a couple more questions. Um, uh, one, and, and I kind of wanted to, this builds on your uh, celebration, right? So uh, I really appreciate the, in, in your book, again, you talk about celebrating small wins, right? Every day, right? Did I, uh, did I wake up today? Win. Win. Did I have a hot water running in my shower? That's a win. Win. You right? Know. So, so how did you, I mean, what, what shaped you to develop that kind of mindset? Um, and again, especially in, in these, the times we're in now, right? Uh, there's a lot of ways to look at it and go, hey, things are horrible. Things aren't working. Things aren't, you know, how do you, how do you develop, why did you develop that mindset and how can it be applied today? Yeah, I mean, a couple of points that happened. One, after my third back surgery, I was out of the NFL for four months. And so I, I took the LSAT. I was, I was looking at life without football for the first time in my life since I was 14 years old. And when I came back, I was so thankful. But even then, when I got released that, that next year, I was like, I was upset. I was angry. I was embarrassed. But then I was like, you know what? This is what I need for my career. I need to do something different I need to be somewhere different sure enough I went to Houston and there in Houston we played in a game and we were getting our tails kicked in and it's very tough to believe you're going to win only champions believe they're going to win no matter what and it's so I'm sitting there in this fourth quarter and I've got this great opportunity to play in the NFL play play on the field in a game make a difference and I kind of didn't give and I didn't give great effort and my coach Gary Kubiak at the time he we were going through the whole film in front of everybody and he, and he pauses the film and he goes well, this is just about effort, isn't it, Ryan? Dog. Yes, sir. Hey, that's never going to happen again. And through my surgeries and through those two experiences, I was like, you know what? Every time I, I enter the code to the open gate and it opens, man, I'm going to celebrate that. One of the things that's so cool in the NFL, when you're going to start in an NFL game, they tape your jersey on for you. My first start, I came in, I was like, where are my pads? They're like, uh, they're above your locker with the jersey already on. Like, you guys put my jersey on for me? And like They're like, yeah. And you just kind of get used to these things. So every single time I saw my locker, even in practice, I was thankful, man. Hey, man, I got a job. I got a J-O-B. There'd be days where I didn't want to practice, you know, where I was tired physically, emotionally. But I chose some words that would help me celebrate. You know, I always go, woo, rock and roll, man. You know, and, and Hark, if you and I are doing something, you're like, gosh, Ryan, you know, like, the hell, man, we're doing this for a fifth time. Woo, rock and roll, man. Do you know that I don't want to do it? Do you know that it's pissing me off? Hell no. It's just like, all right, we're out of it. You know, so it's just things like that that can really pull you out just by celebrating every win. What did you do to get on this internet today, right now? Was it, what did you do to get that computer? What did you have to do to just be here at this webinar? Did you have to take a risk? Did you have to create time? Those are wins. If you've got Wi-Fi, you are winning, man. It's Corona Rona 19. You know, you are winning if you got Wi-Fi. So just celebrate those wins so that you don't so that you don't bog yourself down. And the other thing when you celebrate wins is that you you get to realize how many times you've been there before. Yeah, like it's celebrating a win, you know, Hark, you've done two now webinars today. That's a huge accomplishment, man. You've never done that before, am I right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. So the next time you're like, hey, I've never done this before. You've got a great win to look back at. I was like, yeah, I remember that time I did two webinars in a day and I'd never done that before, but turns out it was good. 
So now are you less worried about doing something new for the first time? So in your wins are resilience and reminders about the success you've already had to this point. And a lot of times, especially high functioning, high achieving people, we forget those things because there's always a next goal. Hey, man, make that space wide. You know, a, a dinosaur's footprint ain't little. It presses in that ground and creates mud. And you got to do that in your life, too. That's awesome. Hey, so, Ryan, so we have time, uh, I think, for, for one more question uh, that, was, that was brought up by an audience member. And then I'm going to let you uh, have some closing remarks. Um, and the question is, what advice can you give when someone keeps digging and they're just not seeing fruit from the road, their labor? Uh, when should we know it's time to change strategy or just keep digging? Yeah, that's a great question. And I'll tell you, even if you change strategy, you're going to have to dig. You know, um, my father-in-law is a geologist. And I asked him one time, because um, I'm a curious person and I always look for parallels. I say, you know what? He used to mine in the, in the mountains of New Mexico. I said, what it, what's it like when it gets dark in a tunnel? And he said, you know, they give us these headlamps and there would be points in the tunnel with even the headlamp on, I couldn't see in front of me. But what'd you do? Did you quit your job? Did you, did you not find your way back out? And he just said, no, you just keep, you keep hitting that hammer in front of you and eventually something will poke out on the other side. Even if you're digging and you aren't seeing results, like I did for eight years in the NFL before my ninth season winning a championship. Like there will be, there will be another side. And if you've got a pivot, okay, great. Now, does that pivot mean you're doing, you're doing the wrong thing? One pivot I had to do in my ninth year, I had to relearn how to breathe because Peyton Manning's running all these plays. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> you don't want to be 315 pounds breathing heavy on Peyton Manning. You can say that right now, right? So I, do, so I went to an MMA coach and I'm like, a coach I know, I'm like, hey man, I got to learn how to breathe. I got to stop spitting on Peyton when he's talking. What do I do? So he taught me, hey, breathe in for five. Hold it for three, swallow the breath, breathe out for eight, and boom. Okay, now I learned something. You know, if you're digging, are you listening to those those things around you? When you dig in that in that hole and tunnel of yours, are you listening to the type of rock you're hitting? Are you listening to the opinions of people who've been there and done that before? Are you trying new things? Or are you just hitting one hammer the same way you've been taught since the beginning of that hole? That's not going to work out. So even when you can't see with that headlamp on, continue to dig and know that whatever direction you dig in is going to require more work and it's going to require you to do new things. So before you pivot, ask yourself that. Did I do something new? Did I use any knowledge that's available to me and what I want to accomplish? Have I ignored any of that knowledge? Have I ignored any of these kind of whispers or signs? And at the same time, know that it's going to be work to get out of that tunnel and which work do you want to do? And I've, again, I talked about earlier, there's peace and surrender as well. There is peace in saying, this is not for me. This, I want to do something else. But make sure you have your priorities and your goals in line so you're not just grabbing at the win. Cool. All right. So uh, we're about at the end of time. Ryan, I wanted to, again, thank you very, very much uh, for joining us uh, and allow you an opportunity for uh, closing remarks before we uh, turn it back over to Liz. Yeah, well, thank you again, Harp. It's always a fun time to see you, my friend. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Bunker Lab. And to all of you who have served, I'll never forget. I will never forget that I'm only able to, you know, have fun and talk about the NFL and my life in it because um, you've all made the sacrifice and efforts to make freedom available for me and, and millions like me. So thank you. And I just encourage you to build on the tools that you learned that have already made you successful. You've got Wi-Fi. You're doing good today. Okay. And there are going to be ups and downs. That's a part of it but choose your mindset everywhere you go. Use every resource you can, but deeper than anything, believe in yourself and your ability to succeed as you have and as you will. Thank you so much. That's great, Ryan. Appreciate it. And for folks who want to, you know, uh, follow uh, Ryan and, and learn more about it, it's uh, ryanharris68.com. Yep. Is that right, Ryan? ryanharris68.com. And uh, feel free to email me, ryan at ryanharris68.com. Um, and, and let me be a resource. If I can ever help uh, anyone, you know, that's one of my goals in life to make an impact. So uh, I'm on Twitter at salams underscore from underscore 68. You can also search my name if you don't know that, but peace from 68. And uh, I'm on Instagram, Ryan Harris underscore 68. And Hark, man, I just got on the TikTok. I don't, I don't know how to make a oh, video, wow. but uh, 
you know, you got to be able to stay with the time. So eventually I'll have some kind of TikTok name, but I do love to dance, you know what I'm saying? So I might be getting right. a little video on, you know? <laughs> and you do have the moves. Uh, right, we'll, man. We'll, we'll, ce we'll celebrate those wins. We got somebody who can uh, uh, give you some instruction on TikTok if you want it. All right. I love it. <laughs> uh, thanks again very much, Ryan. You're a, a great friend, uh, uh, personally, a great friend to, to Bunker Labs and a great friend to the entire community. Uh, Liz, I'll turn it back over to you. Well, I want to thank you both. And I think just echoing um, our community of feeling gratitude for this talk definitely needed that dose of inspiration and motivation from you, Ryan. We appreciate that. We actually had some community members saying that they have read your book. They love it. Um, so we're already getting comments in about that. So that's great. Um, they're already on the mindset for mastery. And so I will encourage all of you to join us tomorrow. We will have our third town hall of the week with Doug McCormick from HCI Equity, who's going to be talking about cash flow management um, during this time. And thank you, Hark. Thank you, Ryan, once again. And we will see you all soon. Thank you. Thanks, Hark. Thanks.